For the regular meeting of the Fort Ord Reuse Authority, today is Thursday, May 14th, 2020. And let's see, uh, we're not going to do a roll call at this point. Um, the first order of business is closed session. Um, Josh or John, do you want to um, tell us how we're going to get into closed session? Maybe Josh, you can do that. And then John, I'll have you um, announce what we'll be discussing in closed session. Very well. Yeah, so we sent out some email ho earlier. Ho hopefully folks had a chance to read that, but we're trying something new today, which is the use of a breakout room feature here, which will make it so you don't have to log out of this meeting and log into another one. There will be, for, for the members who are going into closed session, you will see a little notification appear on your screen, uh, giving you the option to join a breakout room. Simply click that and that'll move us uh, the closed session folks into a separate meeting area and then at the end you'll uh, use a little button on the lower right hand corner to return to the main meeting. So hopefully that works and uh, uh, Harry um, and, and we'll be here and the others if there's something you get hung up in the main meeting area you can always come back to the main meeting link you know from the four website if needed. Terrific thank you thanks so much. All right uh, council would you um, let people know what we will be discussing in closed session? Yes, thank you, Chair. Members of the board and public, we will adjourn into closed session. Uh, item 2A is conference with legal counsel, government code section 54956.9D2, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation, and there are three potential cases. Thank you. Um, before we go into closed session, we want to give a chance to the public to make any comments that uh, you might want to make on uh, any items that will be discussed in closed session. So uh, anyone who's participating via Zoom, you can use the raise hand feature to let us know if you would like to comment. Give a little pause to let people get their equipment all lined up. Doesn't look like there's anyone, so um, thank you. We will recess to closed session and reconvene as soon as we're done. So Harry, you got mm -hmm. this thing going? Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna open up the closed session room. The only two people I hadn't found were Gail and John Gagliotti. So if you two are on the call, uh, let me know and I will invite you to the closed session. Gail is there. Oh, there you are. Thank you. John Gagliotti, are you? I think he's in another meeting. Okay. Yeah. Are there any board members still in the regular meeting that I'm missing? Gail, I see you're here. Did you get the breakout room invitation? Who knows? Harry, this is uh, David Willoughby. I don't seem to have received the breakout room invitation. Oh, let me get you in, David. Yeah, you're still in the regular meeting, Gail. You just disappeared. Uh, Stevie, Oh, and David, I invited you all. Here we go, hang on. Hmm. Huh. Anyone else I'm missing that needs to be invited? I think Director Schreiner might need to be invited, maybe. Or she go, does Marina Coast go into closed session? They don't, right? Uh, no, they don't. Okay, sorry. Oh. Sorry, Director Schreiner.
Okay, I'm going to um, reconvene the regular meeting of the Ford Order Use Authority. It's still Thursday, May 14th, 2020. And um, Council, would you um, let the public know uh, of any actions taken in closed session? Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, members of the board and public, uh, the board met in closed session on item 2A, Conference with Legal Counsel, Government Code Section 549. 56.9 D2, uh, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation. Uh, council brought uh, the board up to speed on three potential cases, and there's nothing to report. Thank you. Um, Mr. Metz, acknowledgments, announcements, and correspondence. Thank you, Chair. Um, Members of the board and Monterey Bay community, we do have a number of correspondence to report. Um, and I'll be just summarizing those. These are available on the Quora website currently. Um, but before I get into that, I'd just like to acknowledge the continuing uh, coordination and response that's happening into the in regards to the coronavirus pandemic. I know members of this board have been actively focused on that. I'd like to uh, acknowledge Supervisor Adams for her leadership with the uh, uh, hospitality industry and District 5. I know that that's a huge uh, issue, uh, both for the health of uh, just our lives, but certainly the budget and the economy of our region. So I think you've, uh, I've noticed a number of your uh, uh, publications on the matter. I just wanted to call that out. Um, uh, I was also planning to do a, a bit of a promotion of our staff, our few remaining staff who are uh, soon to be uh, free agents. Um, I know folks are, um, uh, uh, snipping around um, our offices for talent. Uh, I, I've got a tremendous team that's capable of remote work and dealing with lots of uh, change. And so um, I'll leave it at that for now, but uh, feel free to, to talk with me about any interest you might have in, in uh, finding great people for your organizations. So with regards to the um, Correspondence. There's been quite a list. I think as of uh, just about 10 minutes before our formal meeting, I think we got up to 11 uh, letters. Uh, most of, I believe all of these have been forwarded to your email. You might check your email if you haven't had a chance. Uh, May 1st, there was a letter from the California Native Plant Society. May 5th, there was a letter from LAFCO. May 6th, there was a letter from an email from MCWD. May 7th, there was an email from Landwatch. May 8th, there was an email from the Monterey Santa Cruz Building and Constructions Trades Council. May 8th, there was also an email from LAFCO. May 13th, there was an, another email from the Native Plant Society. May 13th, there was an email from Jack Stewart. May 14th, is that today? Yeah, there was a, there was a email from the, or an email letter from the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council. Today also there was an email from the Stamp Erickson Law Firm. And finally at 1.50 p.m. another letter from LAFCO. So uh, lots of communication from the community and uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing from some of our community members during today's meeting. So that is the conclusion of the acknowledgements, announcements and correspondence. Thank you, Josh. You're very popular. Um, uh, Mr. Tregenza, would you um, do a roll call for us, please? Sure. Supervisor Jane Parker. Here. Supervisor Mary Adams. Here. Supervisor John Phillips. Here. Council member John Gagliotti. Okay. 
Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Gail Morton. Here. Council Member Frank O'Connell. Here. Council Member Alan Hoffa. Here. Mayor Ian Oglesby. Here. Council Member John Wizard. Here. Mayor Marianne Carbone. Here. Council Member Steve McShane. Here. Council Member Cynthia Garfield. Here. Council Member Janet Reimers. Here. Catherine Moon. Colleen Courtney. Here. Erica Parker. Debbie Hale. Here. Dr. P.K. Diffenbaugh. Steve Matarazzo. Here. Dr. Eduardo Ochoa. Or Nicole Hollinsworth. Cole's here. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Colonel Gregory Ford. Colonel Ford stepped out for a moment. He'll be returning shortly. Okay. Bill Collins. Here. Uh, David Martin. Here. Lisa Reinheimer. Or Matt Deal. And uh, Jan Schreiner. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, and I think the record can reflect that um, John Gagliotti is present. Okay. Yeah, I see. PK Diffenbaugh is here. All right. Picking them up as we go. That's great. Um, thank you. We'll move now to the consent agenda. Um, if, uh, is there any board member who would like to pull any of the items on consent, 6A through F, please raise your hand and then I will ask the public. Um, Director Hoffa. Yes, I'd like to pull 6D. D as in delightful or B as in beautiful? Uh, D as in delightful. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Different D, but I'll okay. continue. Yeah, you're, you're allowed to choose another one. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any member of the public wishing to pull any items from consent? 6D, as in delightfully dogged, um, has been pulled. Um, any other items of interest to the public? All right, uh, let's go ahead and um, I would accept a motion to approve items A, B, C, E, and F, if someone wanted to make that motion. Madam Thank Chair, you. I'm sorry, this is Molly Erickson speaking yes. um, to this. I believe uh, that there was a request to pull item 6C that was emailed to you already. Uh, yes, and I'm glad you mentioned it because that's the Veterans Issues Advisory Committee. Was that the one that you wanted to pull or was it the transition status report? Uh, thank you. It must have been the wrong one listed. It was the transition status report. I apologize. Yeah, okay, no worries. Um, thank you. That one is pulled, so um, uh, terrific. Thank you for thank double checking. Thank you. Uh, super. Is there a board member who'd like to make a motion to uh, approve A, B, C, E, and F? Thank you. Uh, I've got a motion from a number of people, but I think I heard uh, Director Adams first. Um, second, McShane. All right, thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Harry, roll would you call. like to do a roll call vote? <sighs> sure. Uh, Mayor Ian Oglesby. Aye. Supervisor Jane Parker. Aye. Supervisor Mary Adams. Aye. Supervisor John Phillips. Aye. Council member Frank O'Connell. Yes. Council member Alan Hoffa. Yes. Council member John Wizard. Aye. Uh, Council member Steve McShane. Yes. Council member Janet Reimers. Aye. <laughs> Council member John Gagliotti. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Gail Morton. Yes. 
Mayor Marianne Carbone. Aye. Member Cynthia Garfield. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, we'll move now to uh, 6D. And uh, Director Hoffa, uh, would you speak to um, the question or comment you have, and then we'll go to the public, and then we'll have uh, staff respond. Yeah, um, I, I've got some comments to share, and maybe while I'm doing that, the executive director could pull up some language that I'd like to share with the board of directors and ask that this part of our uh, consideration when we ultimately vote on this um, at a later date. So I just wanted to get it on the record so that people could see it and think about it. What it has to do with, this item has to do with prevailing wage. And um, I just want to say that for me, as somebody who was part of the transition planning team for three years, uh, one of my concerns was that when for uh, sunsets that our obligations to the working people in our community who are building, uh, who, are, who are rebuilding the former base, that our obligations to them be fulfilled. And we have those obligations as part of our receiving the land from the Army. I was also concerned about our obligations to our community members for affordable housing. Um, and so those responsibilities, as I see it, seem to be in jeopardy, and I'm, I'm very concerned about that. So when we approved the 2018 transition plan, uh, there, it was one of the expectations was that the jurisdictions would assume responsibility for things like prevailing wage, making sure that all first generation projects as defined in the master resolution would, uh, would be um, paid, paid for according to prevailing wage, as well as other things like affordable housing. Uh, and so anyway, this is language that I would like to have put into the record. And I hope that when we uh, deliberate on this, that uh, this would be something that the four board would consider including in the uh, transition plan. And I think that it speaks to the intent of the transition plan we approved in 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, let's see, I see Director Morton has her hand up. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, let me uh, let me go to the public first to see what other comments um, or questions there are on this item, and then I will um, have then I'll uh, recognize board members for comments or questions on any of the issues that have been raised. Maybe after I have staff respond. So, um, any members of the public wishing to comment on? Uh, 6D, please uh, raise your hand uh, in, the, uh, in the Zoom feature, or if you're on the phone, I believe the raise hand uh, mechanism is star nine. And Ron Cheshire and Brian Lanette, Lanev waving their hands. Okay, the old fashioned way? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Um, all right, so, and I see um, Kate McKenna has her hand up in the Zoom. So let's go um, with um, uh, Ron Cheshire and then Brian Leneve and then Kate McKenna. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, the Fora Board for uh, considering this. You know, the prevailing wage issue was one of the first issues that the Fora Board ever passed. It was in the procurement code. It was actually discussed uh, when Forge was in effect and we had a very large community meeting facilitated by Congressman Farr uh, back about 1993. Uh, it was all the culmination. Uh, realizing that the base was closing and that uh, 
in the hopes of President Clinton at the time that the reuse of the military base would go to uh, promote and provide for the uh, uh, local businesses and local workers. Um, <clears throat> What we had come up with, we believed was uh, fair for the community. The Fora board thought it was fair. They implemented it, they passed it. It survived the master resolution, it was included into there. And it's very important. It's important to the working people of this area because it, it levels the playing field in regards to um, how construction is done. I mean, that was the whole idea behind the Davis-Bacon Act back in uh, the 1920s and well, the 30s, uh, the federal government areas and bring uh, workers that were paid less and had a different standard of living than the local contractor, uh, than the local workers. So we, Again, we definitely want this to be taken into consideration. We think it's a very important element for the community and that it should survive. Uh, and that's, uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Leneve and then Kate McKenna. Thank you. My name is Brian Leneve. I'm the president of the Monterey Bay chapter of the California Native Plant Society. I sent you a letter yesterday, which you have acknowledged receiving. I just want to make sure you got that letter. But in that, CMPS stands firm in its commitment to protecting plant preserve, what we call One North, which is protected both by a contract between CMPS, Delray Oaks, and Flora, and also by Flora's CEQA documentation for South Boundary Road and by Flora's mitigation three of the General Jim Moore Highway 218 project. The South Battery Road Realignment Project approved by Ford 10 years ago would have unacceptable and illegal impacts on the Plant Preserve One North. CMPS has expressed its concerns and opposition to the realignment project in letters started in 2017 and continues through May 1st and May 13th of this year. Four staff claims at page 26 of the board packet that four legal counsel is preparing a response to CMPS, but as yet CMPS has seen nothing about that and time is running short. That four statement that the legal counsel has reviewed all agreements and believes that all have been satisfied and or may no longer be enforceable post four sunset at page 26 of the board packet is wrong and in fact. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kate McKenna and then Molly Erickson. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Can everyone hear okay? Good? Yes. Right, thanks. Um, Madam Chair, I, I would, uh, I also appreciate the opportunity to speak to this agenda item 6D, the transition plan status report. Um, in particular, page, um, page 28 of that, of the agenda includes a letter from LAFCO to your executive committee. Uh, from last week. And in that letter, we outline about a dozen issues that have been identified by um, either by LAFCO directly or by uh, forest stakeholders. The uh, pages 25 to 27 of the transition status report provide some initial comments or from your from forest staff um, to those issues of LAFCO and the stakeholders. And we appreciate, the, we definitely appreciate the hard work of your staff and council, the progress made. Um, what I would like to outline for you today and that is provided in a letter that you uh, just received this afternoon and you may not look at it until after the meeting is, um, we wanted to highlight uh, just some of our comments about some of those initial responses from your staff. Um, one area is uh, the, the range of unresolved issues that have been identified by at least eight different stakeholder groups. Um, those issues are relevant to the dissolution process 
And we are urging that the for a, um, staff and council bring official responses to those items, including the one that you were just considering a moment ago about the um, um, issue from the Carpenters Union, um, that these matters be brought directly to the four board for your attention so that you can weigh in on them. Many of them are policy issues, and we feel it is appropriate for the public record in the remaining time available to FORA that the FORA board have the opportunity to go cleanly on the record to state its position. Um, and that would pertain to those unresolved issues of your stakeholders, it would pertain to such matters as the status of your many uh, plans, agreements, and contracts that have been developed and adopted over the past 20, 25 years. What is their status after July 1st? Um, um, it's very important to us as LAFCO in our oversight role that we understand what your clear intentions are because many of those certain stakeholders are LAFCO and expressing litigation procedures after July 1st. Their concern that they are, their interest will not be fully addressed before June 30th. Thank you. So we are uh, seeking additional funding to address those um, that body of uh, litigation concerns. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Molly Erickson is next. Thank you, Madam Chair. Molly Erickson with Stamp Erickson on behalf of Keep Border Wild. Today, Keep Fort Ord Wild sent the FORA board the most recent of years worth of correspondence with, in which FORA KFAO has alerted FORA to the failure to implement key CEQA mitigations and policies that are integral parts of the reuse plan. These policies include things as basic and as important to all of the jurisdictions um, as prohibiting card rooms and casinos. That was required of all jurisdictions who took land at Fort Ord and not a single jurisdiction has adopted that prohibition. Now, these were also include a lot of important environmental and other issues involving um, environmental justice and social equity issues. These were important just in the way as Councilmember Hoffa referred to earlier with regard to obligations that were part of the obligations of receiving land from the army. These were important to the jurisdictions and to community members. They are um, policies and procedures and mitigations put in place as part of the CEQA process. The jurisdictions and for uh, committed to them by adopting the reuse plan and certifying the reuse plan EIR. So we urge you, uh, many of those have not been done and uh, even they, many of them were addressed in the reassessment um, report that FORA did in what back in 2012 and not a single one has apparently been adopted with a few minor um, exceptions. That's the first issue of the KFAL letter of today. The second issue uh, which is the fact that FORA has approved projects, um, capital projects, and it has not assigned uh, the lead agency status to all, um, for all projects. These include projects that are approved but not constructed, and also projects that have been constructed. Um, the Giggling Road widening is a good example, and we gave a couple of other examples in our letter. The, not only should the FORA board affirmatively assign them to a successor agency, but the assignee agency should affirmatively accept the assignment before FORA sunsets. Now, this has not been anywhere on the FORA radar, and there appears to have been no efforts to do so so far. Time is running out. Cape Fort Ord Wild urges you to act immediately to resolve these important and fundamental issues. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, anyone else wishing to speak to the FORA board on the transition status report item? Honorable Chair, Warren Poitras here. Yes, please go uh, ahead. You can hear me. I wasn't sure if I pushed the right buttons. You did, carry on. All right, I, I do have a few words to say if I may. 
Thank you for your time. Uh, as you know, uh, I'm a member of the LAFCO Commission. I represent special districts. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you guys today. LAFCO's executive director has already addressed the fine details of our position, so let me just get straight to the point. As everyone listening is aware, litigation costs money, lots of it. Foro has set, Fora has set aside $500,000 to mitigate any litigation costs LAFCO might it's find itself defending once for a sunset to the end of the month. And while LAFCO's commissioners and staff greatly appreciate this gesture, we know that in today's highly litigious society, $500,000 is unlikely to cover the costs LAFCO will incur from a single lawsuit, let alone the high number that can already be expected. From what we know at this moment, there are at least six and perhaps eight separate litigants lined up to file suits against Fora, and by extension LAFCO. There seem to be more and more such entities considering similar action as the calendar winds down to the end of June, all of which will end up in the lap of LAFCO once Fora sunsets. A number of you sitting on the LAFCO board right now also serve as LAFCO commissioners. This means that some of you will be still be holding the proverbial bag on July 1st. LAFCO is going to need a whole lot more than $500,000 to defend itself once Fora goes out of existence, and each of you is aware this is true. I've already mentioned I represent the interests of special districts on the LAFCO Commission. Few, if any, special districts have any direct interest in or stand to benefit from the outcome of any of these lawsuits. But if LAFCO is forced to own, use its own resources to defend itself from four related lawsuits, LAFCO will have no choice but to look to its member agencies and, by extension, their taxpayers for additional funding. I implore you to consider the consequences of leaving LAFCO underfunded in the face of a myriad of lawsuits sure to come. Please consider allotting LAFCO additional litigation reserve funding. I thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Poitras. Anyone else uh, wishing to address the Fora Board on the transition status report item? I'm not seeing any hands. Um, Josh, any old fashioned hands that I'm not seeing? Okay, um, and not hearing any voices. So I will close the public comment on this item and ask staff to uh, respond to um, any points that um, you feel you can address. I'd Josh, say, do you want to um, that one? Yeah, uh, I'll let Kendall handle the transition items. I'd say the report handles, describes our, you know, best information to date, and uh, I, I wouldn't have much more to add. Kendall, do you have more to, to say? I do, and um, uh, I appreciate all the comments, Dan. and they're obviously very, um, we're, we're pleased to hear them. I think the, the thing I want to remind the board of is that over the last uh, 15 months, we've been meeting pretty regularly with admin and with board and talking about some of these major issues. So I want to take them one at a time um, to member Hoppe's uh, suggested language regarding um, prevailing wage. There's no problem at all with giving the board an opportunity to have that discussion. We're planning on bringing that to the board on the 14th for just discussion and get that input back, no, sorry, for the 22nd and then bring it back for action in June when we anticipate being two votes. But I wanna be clear on that, that the direction given to us in the construction um, of these agreements was really um, influenced heavily by the admin committee and their desire to have some things changed in the agreement. So it's not a, it's gonna be the board's discretion is moving forward about what you guys wanna do. I also want to point out that um, within the context of the 2018 versus the 2020 plan, this is really important. There are a number of things that were in the 2018 plan that are not just um, erroneous, but they are, they're, they we passed deadlines, things have changed. There is no HC, there's a lot of things that have changed fundamentally that this board has taken action on. So the plan here is to release the um, draft of that document um, likely tomorrow so that everyone can have an opportunity to look at it, ask questions, whatever else that we meet again next week, we can have, as I think the chair likes to say, a robust discussion about what is and is not in that. 
I think the other question that, that has been raised, and I just want to give people an update on that as well, um, we are going to be releasing, um, we were calling the final draft of the transition plan implementing agreements. And I want to remind everyone, and I'm going to actually kick it over to uh, David or John, as we've gone through this process and looked at these different agreements, um, legal counsel has been giving advice on what we can and can't do and what is and is not enforceable. And specifically, you know, what role once for has gone, who is the enforcement agency? Is that LAFCO? Is that someone else? So we've tried to adapt to the best um, legal advice given during this, this plan. But as I think Josh and all of us understand, we're in four to six weeks left going back. So the response time or the input from your attorneys and from you is going to be critical. So I'm going to ask that David and John perhaps address how that would reflect in the transition plan implementing agreements and the transition plan itself. But I, I think that we'll have um, at least the next three meetings having these discussions regarding the 2020 transition plan. Yeah, if, if I might, I would just jump in here just to make one slight correction. Um, indeed, we do have a special board meeting next Friday, and we are working to prepare a packet of a pretty significant amount of documents related to the bond issue. So it's unlikely that that's going to go out tomorrow. Uh, likely will go out at the latest by Tuesday. We'll be working as hard as possible to get it out uh, as soon as possible. Great. Thank you. Um, so that's uh, the extent of staff's response, it looks like. So now uh, board members with um, any comments or questions, and I see that uh, Gail uh, Morton, uh, Director Morton has raised her hand. Yes, please. I have. So as a director, I think that I am most interested in resolving the issues that would precipitate litigation for the protection of LAFCO and also for the protection of the jurisdictions after four of sunsets. And I understand Alan Hoffa's, Director Hoffa's request for how do we get prevailing wage to go forward? And I wanna ask some specific questions is, what is the status of SB 533, which sought to add to the government code a specific section 67686 that would survive the termination of the act January 1st, 2021 and require prevailing wage for first generation projects within the four door territory. Maybe Ms. Hollingsworth can tell us what is the status of that bill? It was introduced in 2019. It went into suspension. It's been amended significantly. So where are we? Thank you. I have some follow-up, but I want to start there. Just a, correction, just a correction there. Ms. Hollingsworth is now with CSUMB, and uh, oh, right. there is a Courtney. My apologies. Yes, Cor yes. Uh, Colleen Courtney is Colleen the Courtney. new hot seat. <laughs> Colleen, do you have any comments on that? I'm not hearing her at the moment. Uh, maybe this is a question okay. that can be looked into. We and can just move, move yeah. on. But I, gonna, but obviously that's an enforceable remedy. If so we're going to discuss my, it next week, maybe we, it can be part of the discussion then. So then the next question that I had was, the the discussion when we got the letter from Monterey Bay Central Labor Council, we got the letter from LAFCO, all asking about the effect of the implementation agreements. And that is where the prevailing wage provisions appear. Marina is of the position that those implementation agreements are moot. They're, they're unenforceable once for a sunset. But one of the things that that did have in the agreement, and I looked at Seaside's and I looked at Marina's, was what was an Exhibit F and had deed restrictions in a format that were to be recorded for every transfer of real estate from FORA to the jurisdictions, which indicate that we are going to comply, and it 
says this is a covenant that's going to run with the land for compliance of the terms in the base for use plan and other provisions. Was that recorded for every transfer of real estate that came from FORA to the multiple jurisdictions? It would be included in each, each transaction. This is different than the recordation of just the master resolution, which is as notice. This is deed restrictions, covenants running with the land. And Does Member anybody Wharton, know? Yeah, Member Wharton, my understanding is that it, that, um, that would be a John and David question, but the deeds were recorded as my understanding for the, for the property transfers with, that have taken place. With exhibit F language. Uh, that I cannot verify without looking at it specifically, but I'd have to double check back. So, so then the next question is, does exhibit F enforce the prevailing wage as to all parcels of property that have been transferred prior to June 30th, 2020? And therefore, do we have it in place currently? The understanding from council was that anything that was in the deed that was specified in the deed and was recorded would continue with the land post for right that it goes on I'm watching it's right not, specific, we'll off, right? not specific to prevailing wage if that was not tied to the deed and just to be clear i don't know where john and david went but the the army's position did not include prevailing wage the prevailing wage um pieces came from state legislation but i'd have to defer to david to to answer oh there's john there you go I guess. yeah no, I'm not talking about the transfer from the Army to FORA. This was in the implementing agreements indicating that every jurisdiction agreed when land was transferred, the language, the conditions and covenants in Exhibit F were going to be included in the transfers. Did that include prevailing wage? And in fact, was that recorded with each transfer? I'm trying to address what the public is concerned about and I'm trying to see if we have it already taken care of. Thank you. Great. And I think those are questions. Um, it seems like maybe people don't have those answers uh, at their fingertips at the moment. Although, oh, Josh is showing fingertips. I'm showing some fingertips. Uh, the, the, the people with most familiarity with all of the deed and transfers are, are Stan Cook. And so um, I've just been kind of communicating with him to see if, if he might be able to jump on. But I can say that um you know this is an item that we can look into and bring back on on friday if if he's unable to get on here in a timely enough fashion i think the um okay perfect yeah but i i'm looking at those as discussions that would help with if in fact we have taken care of it with the public concerns and the concerns about lawsuits regarding enforceability so that, those are questions that we can answer when we get to that. Um, and I just remind everybody, the difficulty that we've had with prevailing wage is it's the Department of Industrial Relations upon whom we all rely for enforcement. FORA has never had the ability to enforce. But if it's in the deeds and a covenant that runs with the land, um, that would be great if we could make that clear to our friends in the Labor Council. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, comments and questions. And I think that's a good setup for our discussion next week uh, to make sure we do have that information available. Maybe it can even be part of the board report or somehow uh, presented to us. Great, those are important points. Uh, Director Ramers, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to just support what uh, uh, Commissioner um, Morton said earlier and one of her first comment, and that is that I too oh. share her concern about getting everything as clean and as as concisely and well understood of what is expected that the community worries about so that we won't be spending money on litigation that we really can move the jurisdictions forward uh, to have a clean slate and be able to move forward and argue if they aren't happy with everything that they're getting in the agreements at this juncture they can hopefully work with the, the um, items and and move forward in and not have to go into litigation now. So I believe that was her comment in the very beginning. If it is, I certainly agree with it and hope that we can use that as a goal uh, going forward in looking at the transition plan. Whatever exercises we can do to 
to ease that transition for the jurisdictions. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Some good points raised. Um, any other board member with a comment uh, at this point? All right, seeing none, I think, uh, yes, Mr. Metz. Yeah, I'll just say that uh, Colleen Courtney has, has uh, been communicating. She is here and could address the status of the, the modding legislation on prevailing wage. Okay. So uh, she, let's see if uh, we can Take get- Take it away, Ms. Courtney. Hi there. Um, we, we don't have the legislation. It, it, it hasn't moved forward, so. Due, due to COVID-19, we had to reduce to only COVID-19 related bills or uh, bills that were time sensitive. So uh, we, we were not able to move forward with the prevailing wage bill and uh, Monterey County labor, uh, labor is aware of this. Uh, and I thought we, we communicated that with Florida as well, but I apologize if we did not. That's, we have Toby on my phone to help address the question <laughs> for anyone who's curious. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, your voice had had a nice little change there. Um, so, <laughs> so it sounds like um, the modding bill is in quarantine um, due to COVID. So uh, thank you. Thanks for that information. So I think um, the uh, item 6D is uh, just reviewing uh, the progress. Uh, we've gotten some good input and it sounds like we have a discussion uh, coming to us next week on the prevailing wage uh, issues. So uh, with that, I'm prepared to uh, uh, accept a motion to uh, uh, approve item 6D or accept it basically. I just want to note, uh, it looks like Stan just joined the call also. Um, so to the chair, what are we approving? It's an information item. Right. I think we're just so move to accept. It. Move to accept the report. Great. A second. Thank you. Okay. There's a motion and a second uh, to accept the report. Yeah. Sorry, my my uh, bad lingo. Um, I guess the question is, do we want to hear uh, from Stan Cook since he's here, or shall we wait until next week? Any any thoughts on that? I'd suggest next week. We, we I would ex expect that we would address everything next week with regard to the exhibit F and the covenants. So it's a legal question as well as a recordation question. Okay. Thank you for Great. asking, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you. And thanks, Mr. Cook, for joining us. You are now liberated to um, go do whatever work you were otherwise engaged in. Um, Director Oglesby, do you have a question or comment on the motion? Uh, it's going to be a comment. Uh, I appreciate, well, I support the motion. Uh, just I want to make sure we include uh, Director Hoffer's uh, suggestion and uh, additional language. Thank you. It's actually um, not up for action today. It was uh, suggested well, that it be put uh, on the agenda for discussion next week. So yeah, and that's, no, that's happening. No, no action, Chair. Just I want to make sure that was included in us, us accepting uh, the item. Got it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Good. Uh, Mr. Tregenza, um, roll call vote, please. And just to clarify, the motion was from Morton, second by Member Alpha? Uh, I think the other way around. It was the reverse. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Ian Oglesby? Aye. Supervisor Jane Parker? Aye. Supervisor Mary Adams? Aye. Supervisor John Phillips? <laughs> See him here. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> uh, Council Member Frank O'Connell. Yes. Council Member Alan Hoffa. Yes. Council Member John Wizard. Hi. Uh, Council Member Steve McShane. Yes. Council Member Janet Reimers? Yes. Council Member John Gagliotti? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Gail Morton? Yes. Mayor Marianne Carbone? Mm -hmm. 
Aye. Uh, Council Member Cynthia Garfield. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We'll move now to our business items. First one is 7A. And um, it has been suggested that we take um, the various uh, memoranda of agreement kind of one by one. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll have the staff uh, begin the presentation, talk about the main points of the first memorandum of agreement. I'll ask for any comments or questions from the board and then comments or questions from the public. Um, we will not take action at that time. We'll move to the next one, comments and questions, et cetera, et cetera, until we've gone through them all and then we will take an action at the end. Um, that's my proposal. So um, staff, I hand it to you to um, uh, do the presentation. Okay, th thank you, Chair. Um, I'm gonna have major help from uh, David Willoughby, who was the main author of most of these agreements in uh, coordination with um, uh, jurisdiction staff. I will say that um, we did uh, have a request from county staff that the um, uh, Oak Woodlands item be uh, held back. They, they wanted more time to review the agreement. So today's action would really be on considering the first three of the memoranda of agreement. Okay, so can everyone see the slides that I'm sharing? Is that yes. visible? Okay. Yeah. So David, um, let me just do a little background and then I'll, I'll pass, uh, you know, the background here is that um, there was the adoption of the mid-year budget, which approved additional expenditures uh, that were recommended by the Finance Committee and others. Um, April 30th, there was a status report on the projects and um, then uh, the finalization of these agreements was underway. And um, I'll let David take it from here in terms of the purposes of the MOAs and each individual one that is before you. Okay, and, and I'm appreciative of the fact that it's already late in the day and that we have an impending uh, deadline for this meeting, so I will try and keep it relatively short. Uh, the purpose of each of the MOAs is to essentially define each party's responsibilities, uh, describe the transfer of the funds that FORA has authorized to support these particular endeavors, and acknowledging the transition of lead agency status to the uh, jurisdictions where lead agency status remains applicable to the, uh, the specific endeavor. Um, as part of the background process of fleshing out these uh, memorandum agreements, FORA staff has been working on consolidating project related data and uh, transferring that information to the, uh, the intended recipient of the funds. Uh, if we could now go to the slide on the, uh, the first MOA. This describes the arrangements for the project that involves the removal of the stockade uh, from uh, Marina territory. Uh, this is a fairly fully developed project. It, it got to the point that it was put out to bid. So there are uh, well-developed plans, specifications. Uh, we, you know, it's, it's a project that uh, involves a significant amount of funds and there is a significant amount of background data that has been and is being transferred to Marina regarding this. Uh, the MOA will specifically acknowledge that the city becomes the lead agency for the project. And also because there is some hazardous waste removal, it will be considered the waste generator with respect to any waste removed after entry into this MOA. Uh, my understanding is that the draft agreement was presented to the Marina City Council and received approval late last month and that this document is ready for execution pending approval by the FORA board. Did we uh, wanna have any specific discussion on this MOA before we move on to the next one? 
Thank you. Um, any board members with questions or comments on um, on this MOA? Where we are? I'm not seeing any hands. Are there? Yes, I'm trying to get my hand up. I'm sorry. Oh, I do have a question. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Great. Director Morton. Okay. So yes, I do have a quick question. So having listened to the items earlier today on item 6D is in David and the fact that there's potential litigation, I want to be sure that I understand that by entering into this memorandum of agreement between the city of Marina and Fora, that Marina is accepting lead agency status responsible for this project going forward in all matters, correct? That's my understanding, yes. And if in fact that is acceptable in that designation that LAFCO believes them to be relieved of any threat of litigation, but before I ask that question, I have one more question in between there. Is FORA aware of any potential litigation? Have they been informed of any potential litigation where Marina would then be named as a defendant for acts done through this date or not done by FORA? There was a uh, flap about the bid award and, uh, and rejection process, but my understanding is that that case has been settled by dismissal uh, with prejudice, and I am not aware of any other potential litigation that would bring Marina into uh, into the fold for actions taking place prior to the transfer of this project to Marina. Thank you. I thank you for confirming that. And obviously, in regard to the earlier comments about resolving these disputes, that's the, the reason for the question. Thank you, Mr. Willoughby. Thank you. Any other members of the FORA board with questions or comments on this memorandum of agreement? All right, any members of the public wanting to ask a question or make a comment on this MOA? If you could raise your hand in the Zoom hand raising area or uh, Mr. Metz, if you're, use, if you're using the old fashioned way and I can't see you, uh, I'll rely on Mr. Metz. See, see Mr. Else? Cheshire waving his hands around. Is that, oh. is that for us? Okay, Mr. Cheshire, take it away. Actually, I was just moving around, Josh. I okay. don't have. Okay. Um, all right. So seeing see, no members. Seeing John Giffen here raising his hand, waving his hand. Oh. I, just, I did want to just comment um, on uh, Gail Morton's question, um, and that is we did receive a letter about a half an hour before this meeting, uh, which said that there was a, it was, it was entitled notice of intention to sue. I have not read that letter. Um, it was from uh, Molly Erickson representing KFAO. Um, and to the extent she takes issue with the lead agency status, how it's being fashioned and, and um, how it's being described in the MOA, uh, I, I do think there is a potential for uh, Marina to be involved in that litigation. I, I'm not saying it is or not, is not, but I just wanted to flag that issue um, for uh, Council Member Morton or Mayor Pro Tem Morton. Um, thank you, and it's not related actually, it's more generalized, but not related specifically to this uh, takedown of the stockade. I understand. I just wanted to make sure we had the full scope covered. Great, thank you for your help. Thank you. All right, so I'm uh, not seeing any further comments on this. So Mr. Willoughby, um, let's move to the next MOA. Okay, the next MOA relates to the repair of stormwater infiltration units located in Eucalyptus Road in the jurisdiction of Seaside. Uh, the MOA provides for the transfer of money to the city to fund the, those repairs to the extent that the money transferred is not sufficient to cover the repairs the city will have to figure out how to cover any difference 
if the city manages to uh, to figure out how to achieve the repairs at a lower cost, the city will be able to retain the savings. Um, similar to other uh, MOAs, Forest staff has been identifying relevant project information and contracts and has already begun the process of transferring that information to Seaside. Uh, you may note on the slide here that the city will carry out the repairs in compliance with applicable law, including acting as a lead agency if required by CEQA. And the reason that it says if required by CEQA is that it's not clear that um, being a repair project to an existing improvement, this would count as a capital P kind of project within the meaning of CEQA. But to the extent an lead agency may be required, it will be the city of Seaside and not FORA after entry into this MOA. Uh, I understand that the document has been agendized for approval by the city council on May 21. And uh, once approved by the city council would be ready for execution following FORA board approval. Thank you. Um, any board members with questions or comments on this memorandum of agreement? You would raise your hand. Uh, yes, Director Wizard. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I would just ask the same question, uh, Council Member, uh, excuse me, Mayor Pro Tem Morton asked about uh, this stockade. Is there any uh, late breaking uh, notification of potential lawsuits related to this little P project? With the, the possible exception uh, of the letter that uh, Mr. Giffen referred to, which I have not read. Um, I'm not aware of any specific threat of litigation regarding this project. Very good, thank you. And thank you, Madam Chair. Well, I would, I would add though that the REI claim is um, derived from uh, the Seaside Surplus Two project. I, I appreciate that, Madam Chair. If I'll just follow up very quickly. Uh, my particular questions, uh, limited to eucalyptus road but i appreciate that uh, thoroughness mr giffen sorry sorry thank you um director morton yes uh director wizard asked one question because we're trying not to transfer potential litigation to the underlying jurisdiction <laughs> director wizard but my next question was if this has not yet been approved by the city of Seaside would, and since they are the one that are taking responsibility, would have the most interest in the terms. Would it be appropriate for us to not approve this, but just put it on the agenda for next week when they're hearing it next Thursday, the 21st? It seems you like approve. we have the cart before the horse. City of Marina you reviewed and approved our contract at City Council before you took act. You may be taking action on it today and I'm trying to make sure Seaside has the same opportunity. You could approve it subject to Seaside uh, approval. And if they approve it, then we're all good and we don't have to agendize it for, for next week. Um, otherwise, it comes back next week if Seaside does not approve it. I might also mention that the, the document has received staff level approval, although staff does not control the discretion of the city council. Uh, but also the authorizing resolution by the Fora board would leave the executive officer latitude to make minor adjustments and, uh, and changes to the extent consistent with the fundamental purpose of the MOA. So if there was some last minute tweak required uh, as, as a condition of the Seaside City Council's approval, there would be room to accommodate that even if you acted on the uh, the MOA today. Thank you. Uh, Director Oglesby. I thank the chair. I would just encourage the board to, to move this forward today. I, I believe Seaside has all the intentions on passing this uh, when we see it. Um, and so I'll just throw that in there uh, for the benefit of the board. Okay, thank you. Any other board members with comments or questions on the MOA before us? Um, all right, any members of the public uh, wishing to raise a question or make a comment on this member memorandum of agreement? If you would uh, raise your hand in the Zoom 
uh, area or raise your hand the old fashioned way and Mr. Matz will help me see you and recognize you. All right, I'm not seeing anyone. So uh, Mr. Willoughby, we'll move to the next one. Thank you. Okay, this one describes uh, the transfer of funding for certain roadway and intersection improvements near the uh, intersection of General Jim Moore Boulevard and South Boundary Road, uh, consistent with prior actions taken by the Fora Board. Uh, this agreement details the funding of two escrow holding accounts for uh, total funds in, in excess of $8 million and transfer of uh, a little over half a million dollars to the city for design services. Um, this, uh, this roadway improvement activity, although it, it was consideration regarding this began quite a long time ago, the final design has not yet been settled upon we are at present uncertain as to the exact location of the intersection improvements and the, the engineering design that will go into making those improvements. That's in part why design services money is being transferred to Delray Oaks to allow it to continue that work. Uh, you may note in the, uh, the fourth bullet point that the city of Delray Oaks will be responsible for any further environmental analysis review or approval of implementation of any environmental mitigation measures or monitoring programs and coordinating with the city of Monterey or other governmental entities. Uh, not stated in here, but uh, something that we, we ought to recognize is that because this project may have some impact on a habitat area in which the Native Plant Society has um, interests and concerns, it will be the responsibility of the city to uh, go through the meet and confer process to try and resolve issues with the Native Plant Society under existing agreements to which Delray Oaks is already a party. Um, the draft MOA has been submitted for review, has received staff level approval from Delray Oaks, and we are expecting uh, approval at a city council meeting next week. Uh, it would then be ripe for execution um, following for a board approval. Thank you. Any uh, for a board members with questions or comments on this MOA? I guess yeah, I- the chair, John Gagavit, can you- Sure, yes, I, <laughs> Director I Gagavit. tried to raise the hand and yeah. Um, I just in the spirit of, of moving this forward, just the red, uh, we would accept the same terms or the same kind of accommodations that Seaside is getting is that uh, we, we ask that the board go ahead and approve this with the condition that um, we know that final decision has to be made with our uh, with our council but um, but please go ahead and and, uh, and approve this uh, at the four board level. Okay, thank you. Um, any other board members with questions or comments? I guess I do have one question in the in the seaside um, MOA or at least in the in the summary bullet points uh, lead agency um, uh, status uh, for environmental review was was called out specifically with um, that language here. It's the looks like all the concepts are being covered, but um, not the same language. Could you speak to why that might be? It's a, an artifact of the uh, summarization process. Um, I'm flipping through the uh, the MOA now and looking for the paragraph that that deals with it. But uh, I'm confident. Yeah, there's a paragraph four deals with the notification of the state clearinghouse providing that the parties will cooperate and providing notification that FORA is not carrying out the improvements and the city has assumed the role of lead agency for the improvements. So that concept just didn't make it into the bullet point summary. Got it. Thank you. Um, so if there are no other board comments or questions, I will open it to the public for any comments or questions. I see that, um, oops, uh, Director Morton, were you, trying to get in under the wire or do you want to 
Um, I can wait till after public comment. I just wanted to confirm that at page 26 called out earlier in our um, item 6D was that council, our council has not responded to the native plant um, society that is the potential party to litigation here. That still has not happened, correct? There was a draft response circulated this morning and because of the need to prepare for and conduct this meeting, my, my expectation is that it has not hit the mail yet, but uh, Okay, going so on. it hasn't been, got it. So it hasn't been communicated to the Native Plant Society. Draft meaning circulated among your staff and fora. Right, and, uh, Thank and you. perhaps John or, or Josh may have more recent information than I do, but uh, to my knowledge, that has not yet been transmitted. And that letter will outline the uh, extensive communication for has had with CNPS. Great, thank you. My questions oh. are moving towards trying to get it resolved. Thank you. Right. Okay, so now opening it up to the public, I see that uh, Kate McKenna has her hand raised. Yes, please go ahead. Right. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, as, as it pertains to this uh, proposed roadway project, um, as has been noted by Mr. Willoughby and others, the Monterey Bay chapter of the California Native Plant Society has uh, raised many CEQA and contractual issues pertaining to this proposed project. Um, and as we did discuss under item uh, 6D, the four uh, staff and council have committed to preparing a response. We at LAFCO are requesting that the four board have the formal opportunity to review that response, um, to, uh, to make every effort to resolve these issues. You may also know that um, the California Native Plant Society local chapter has um, uh, submitted to FORA a notice of intent to file legal action pertaining to this matter. So what all of this points uh, to for us at, at LAFCO is that it would be prudent on the part of the FORA board uh, to please um, postpone action on this particular agreement until you at the board level have the opportunity to understand how your staff and council propose to resolve uh, these CEQA and contractual matters that are the rest of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public uh, wishing to speak? I see Molly Erickson has raised her hand. Yes, please, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think the letter from the Native Plant Society says a lot of, has a lot of information that I hope the board reads before they act on this. Um, and it, you heard earlier from CNPS president, Brian Leneve, you may hear from him again on this point. I want to address a couple of specific points. One is I just heard Mr. Willoughby say that there is a, the realignment of the South Boundary Road project may have impacts on the habitat reserve. He used the word may have. That is incorrect. FORA has adopted specific language in its environmental documentation that says that the realigned project will have impacts on the protected habitat reserve, will have. There is absolutely no dispute that FORA has taken the firm position that this project will have impacts on the protected habitat reserve. So make no mistake, that there, might, that there might be some way to wiggle out of this. There is absolutely no way, and the Native Plant Society's permission is required to proceed with the road project as for it has specifically stated in its adopted environmental document. Now, the, pro the habitat reserve is protected in two ways, as has been referenced earlier, both by contract and through a mitigation for a different project. 
for the North South Road Highway 218 project. And it is enforceable under both, although FORA has tried to get out of both approaches. The PowerPoint presentation you have in front of you, and which the chair just very not cor correctly asked why the difference between the two, it still doesn't address the problems, even if Del Rio were to take, away, take over the mitigation measures. That would not solve the problem. That would not resolve the issue, as I have heard several board members very wisely say, let's focus on resolution. In fact, for artfully, is one term, sneakily is another, did not put the Native Plant Society consent in the mitigation monitoring and reporting plan. So even if Delray Oaks were to take over the mitigation monitoring and reporting program, it would not include this requirement to which FORA has committed. I think these are very important points that you need answers to in writing before you take any action. And I strongly urge you not to take action on this specific item today. There are far too many questions from far too many people and far too much risk involved. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I see uh, Dino Pick has his hand up. Please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, uh, Chair. Um, I strongly urge the, the board to approve this MOA uh, today. The city of Del Rio has been working with the forest staff uh, to, uh, to meet with the California Native Plant Society uh, for well over 12 months. And uh, quite frankly, we welcome uh, the recent uh, change in perspective from CMPS from uh, avoiding meeting to being willing to meet. And we look forward to meeting and working through uh, through the matters that we frankly have been trying to do for a year. Um, and I was glad to see Mr. Leneev on, on the call as well. Um, I have tried to meet with his board and have been refused the opportunity. Um, so again, we appreciate the, the change in uh, attitude from CMPS and look forward to uh, engaging with them. Uh, much of what Molly uh, has said today is interesting but irrelevant when it comes to the MOA. Uh, the, the fact that we need to work with them uh, is, uh, is true. It will be true after June 30th, and the project will come to the city of Delray Oaks. Providing for that mechanism through this MOA so that our city council can consider it on May 26th uh, is prudent uh, and wise and the thing to do uh, given the, uh, the dw rapidly dwindling amount of time. Uh, and I'm uh, glad to see the, the forest staff um, uh, respond uh, to, to CMPS and the city looks forward to, uh, to working with that. Um, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the need to transfer the project um, uh, doesn't, doesn't go away. It will, it will happen uh, regardless of, of any action taken. Uh, but your action today will allow for a smooth and effective transition of the project uh, rather than a continued uh, uh, delay of it, uh, which creates its own level of uncertainty for our jurisdiction, uh, as well as your rapidly dwindling staff. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Anyone else from the public with comments? Yes, Brian and Eve. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I apologize. I don't know how I raised my hand on Zoom, so I do the fashion way. Um, Molly covered a lot of points that I was going to go over. Um, the one thing I worries me about what I'm seeing with this MOA here is the other two MOAs I looked at showed that the city would be the lead agency for CEQA going forward, and I don't see that in this MOA right here. And there is a sequel document that covers this. So I think that's important to put in there. Um, and just to reiterate, this is a real serious problem for CMPS. And we've been trying to get this resolved since 2017. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else from the public with comments on this item? I see Director Schreiner has her hand up. She's a member of the board, so I'll 
uh, wait on that. Um, okay, seeing no other uh, members of the public coming forward, I'll bring it back to, um, uh, let's see, uh, it's, let me see if staff has anything that you want to say in response to any of the points that were raised, and then we'll go to board members' comments or questions. I'll just, uh, yeah, David Willoughby might have a couple remarks on the legal matters, but I can just tell you that uh, we have 46, 47 days to go, and uh, getting these items checked off our to-do list uh, is would be uh, significant steps towards all the many complex matters that we're trying to get resolved. And, and um, I, I will say that uh, I've developed a new theme for um, moving forward, which, which I'll put simply as uh, disappoint equally. So I hope that uh, we can uh, find a way to get this done and allow the cities to uh, chart their own futures. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Willoughby, anything you want to say? I, I, I've noted the comments. I, I don't think it would be productive to respond. Okay. To Thank you. Um, uh, Director Schreiner and then Director Hoffa. I, uh, thank you for giving me a moment of your time. As we at the Marina Coast Water District Board meetings had some discussion around the South Boundary Road uh, timing last year, and I recall uh, very specifically asking a uh, city manager of Delray Oaks if he had been in contact with California Native Plant Society and he had been very reassuring at that time and um, and so I'm sort of surprised about the language that he was using today that he felt somehow uh, CNPS had not been uh, entirely cooperative so I wonder if he could clarify his remarks uh, it seems like at some points he and uh, Mayor Kerr had been meeting with CMPS and now he's saying that he has not had any meetings, so I'm confused. Thank you. Director Hoffa? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, so I would like to move approval of the MOAs as presented by staff. I will second the motion, Ramers. Oh, okay, Degla, I was going to second it. I'm sorry, I was uh, on mute. If I might ask for clarification, is the motion to approve all three of the MOAs as presented by staff? It is. Uh, Mr. Matz, I, I sent an updated resolution. <coughs> Approving the uh, the three. Uh, thank you. <coughs> this so what's on the screen, the screen is a. a um, proposed resolution that differs from the one that was in the board packet by omitting the references to the Oak Woodlands uh, project, which uh, the county asked for some more time to review before uh, it was brought before the board. So this is essentially the same resolution that's in the packet with references to the Oak Woodlands uh, uh, project removed. And, and just to clarify, this doesn't affect any of the MOAs uh, materially. Is that correct? No, th this is the, uh, the evidence of the board's approval of the MOAs uh, in the forms on file with the secretary, but it also allows the executive officer the discretion to make non-substantive changes if last minute issues. Yes, happen. then it, it would be my intention as the maker of the motion to include the uh, resolution language. Thank you. The maker of the motion is um, clarifying that the motion applies to the updated um, resolution. Is that okay with the seconder? 
Robert. Uh, Gagliardi, I'll tell you. If, if, yeah, Gag, whoever said. Thank you. Um, I see Director Morton has her hand up. Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a substitute motion that we approve the resolution excluding item C, which is what is up on the screen currently, and excluding paragraph F, which is the Delray Oaks. And if I get a second, I will give uh, address why I'm making a substitute motion. O'Connell will second. Thank you. So we, we have spent the afternoon talking about how to protect our jurisdictions from litigation when FORA goes away and having FORA take responsibility for its contractual obligations and the things that we have put into place as an organization and to do that. The Native Plant Society is indicating that they are going to file suit. The letter came in. I don't have a copy of it, but council has explained that to us. We had the city manager just speak to us stating, uh, Mr. Pick stating he in, invites the Native Plant Society to meet with him, talk with him. FORA needs to be involved in that. It's a three-way contract. And I'm not interested in just sliding it under the table and not addressing that. And most importantly, LAFCO, we heard from the director of LAFCO, Ms. McKenna is also indicating that why would you make a decision until you have the benefit of legal analysis? And perhaps because of my training, it's very difficult for me to support something without truly understanding the ramifications. And until we have that memo that circulated in the interior of our organization to the directors who are responsible for the ultimate decisions, it's very difficult to support approval. The other thing is that the, there are call-outs about lead agencies that are different in the different MOUs that are in front of us. That gives me concern. I need to have a better understanding of why that is. And then also the MOU, as Mr. Pick pointed out, he's asking from the city of Delray Oaks saying, go ahead and approve uh, this memorandum of understanding or memorandum of agreement. But what the Native Plant Society is singing about is a contract and making a very definitive statement about that, which gives me tremendous pause that Delray Oaks may not truly be understanding the responsibility to meet the obligations of that contract. So I would request we support a motion that approves everything except C and F so that we can have additional information. We come back next Friday. It is not that hard to get our legal counsel to give us the additional information. And or the Native Plant Society, FORA and Delray Oaks scheduling that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Hoffa and then Director Phillips. Uh, yes, Chair, thank you. So I would urge the board to vote down the alternate motion and support the original motion. Uh, I actually gave some thought to legal liability in the, in the motion that I made. Uh, we heard, and I, I won't go into detail, but we heard uh, advice from agency counsel in closed session that the best way to protect us uh, for, uh, from, and LAFCO from litigation in this instance was to approve the MOA. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also note that <laughs> Um, we heard two comments from uh, Molly Erickson. One, during uh, item 6D, she said, well, you're not assigning responsibility for the CIP projects. And basically, the implication was we were going to be sued by her because we're not doing that. Then we heard later, well, now you're assigning this, but I don't like some of the words in the way that you're assigning the responsibility. So I think the truth of the matter is we face litigation no matter what we do. And uh, I think what we're trying to do here is give the responsibility to the lead agency of lead agency status to the responsible party, which in this case is Delray Oaks. In the case of the, uh, of the first item, Marina, and in the case of the other item, Seaside. And with respect to the plant, uh, Native Plant Association or Society, 
Delray Oaks will negotiate with them and will resolve the issue to their satisfaction. Um, I think that holding it back is, is it could compromise the project because we really do not have a lot of time. And I think moving, opposing the alternate motion, approving the initial motion is the best way to protect all entities from legal uh, risk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Director Phillips and then Director Gagliotti. The uh, substitute motion uh, uh, does not surprise me. Uh, I will support uh, all three together or none at all. Thank you. Director Gagliotti and then Director Adams. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, Director Hoffa just really made a lot of the points that I was going to raise very, very succinct. But um, just to kind of add to that, um, I mean, I think that Delray Oaks is well, with their, well within our power to, you know, do this uh, on our own. And I, while I appreciate the, um, the counsel from Director uh, Morton, uh, I would ask the board to vote down the alternate, um, emo or the, the alternate motion and allow us to move forward on our own. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, Director Adams, did you wish to speak? Your hand went away. Okay. Hey, Oglesby. Director Oglesby, you're next. I, I thank the chair. I'm not in support of this substitute. I think um, Director Hoffa put his, his thumb on it. With only roughly about 40 something odd days to go, how many times are you gonna put something off? And then my understanding from uh, legal counsel, uh, the outside legal counsel was that we should start assigning some of these things. So we need to start assigning these items out. I mean, as a group, when are, you, when are we going to do it? The last two weeks? So it's not going to be perfect. I understand a lot of people don't agree with it, but the four board has to get these things off its plate. And so we can't make each uh, um, agency and or jurisdiction happy, um, but four board has to get them off their plate. So uh, uh, I'm not in support of this. I look forward to uh, uh, voting for the original motion. Thank you. Any other board members with comments? I'm uh, not seeing any hands. I guess um, I will just say that, um, you know, I, I, I'm i unsure uh, of exactly what to do. I know that I spoke with county staff, um, uh, well, actually via email um, yesterday and today about the county's concerns with the readiness. Um, there just wasn't enough time and there were a couple of sub, uh, substantive issues. Um, I am concerned that with the Delray Oaks, um, the set of uh, documents and, and um, commitments that are being transferred, um, I heard something from uh, the Native Plant Society's council that indicates that there may be an important piece that may be missing. Um, and so I would rather get that worked out in advance uh, rather than putting Delray Oaks um, in an unfortunate um, situation. Uh, so um, I, I will be supporting the substitute. Uh, oh, Jesus, um, can't I see you. that um, Director Gagliotti has his hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, again, I, I, I appreciate everyone's concern for Delray Oaks, but b believe me, we can take care of ourselves. So, I mean, if you're voting, if you're voting to, in support of this motion because you're worried about us, please don't. Thank you. Uh, Director Morton. So it's not just about Delray Oaks. It's about litigation where everybody is going to be named and LAFCO is going to be named. So that is why I want FORA to take care of its responsibilities before FORA sunset. And I think everybody that's a party to this agreement has indicated a willingness to get there. The other thing that is so huge and looming is on a May 5th letter, a May 6th letter, the April something letter, every letter that we get from LAFCO, 
LAFCO is saying we are requesting $1.5 million to be prepared to respond to these threatened litigation. And uh, there is enough there that I think we need to address. We don't have $1.5 million. We need to take care of these things. Let's get our work done. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Question. Any other board member comments? Um, had a question. Uh, she was just saying, I think she wants to vote. So oh, yeah, um, me too. I yep. muttered on that. I should have raised my hand. <laughs> I'd like to call the question. Well, yes, it's getting to be that time of day, isn't it? Um, okay, so we do have a motion on the floor, and this is the motion to um, adopt the resolution minus paragraphs C and F. Uh, Mr. Tregenza, would you do a roll call vote, please? Ms. Mrs. Chairman, Chair, which, uh, which is this the substitute motion or is this the original motion, please? This is the substitute motion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor Ian Oglesby. Nay. Supervisor Jane Parker. Aye. Supervisor Mary Adams. You're on mute, Mary. Nay. Supervisor John Phillips? No. Council Member Frank O'Connell? Yes. Council Member Alan Hoffa? No. Council Member John Wizard? No. Council Member Steve McShane? No. Council Member Janet Reimers? No. Council Member John Gagliotti? No. Mayor Pro Tem Gail Morton? Yes. Mayor Marianne Carbone? No. Council Member Cynthia Garfield? No. Motion fails. Thank you. Um, that motion fails. So now I believe we move to the original motion. And um, Mr. Tregenza, would you uh, provide us with a roll call vote, please? Mayor Ian Oglesby? Aye. Supervisor Jane Parker? No. Supervisor Mary Adams? Aye. Supervisor John Phillips? Aye. Council Member Frank O'Connell? Yes. Council Member Alan Hoffa? Yes. Council Member John Wizard? Aye. Council Member Steve McShane? Yes. Council Member Janet Reimers? Yes. Council Member John Gatti? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Gail Morton? No. Mayor Marianne Carbone? Yes. Council Member Cynthia Garfield. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, so it can come back next week um, for a second vote um, since we'll be meeting next week. And we'll move now to um, business item 7B, the Joint Community Facilities Agreements. Madam Chair, this is Director Wizard. May I interrupt just for a moment? You may. Thank you. Um, I don't know what Director Oglesby will do, but uh, we have a 5.30 meeting and I need to do some preparation. So since nobody can see me get up and leave, I just wanted to say that I'll be leaving the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good meeting. Um, all right. We'll move to 7B. Uh, uh, staff have a presentation. Uh, there's, no pre there's no presentation. Uh, again, David Willoughby, uh, who was the main author of this document, will kind of step you through an overview. I think most of it's uh, well presented in the staff report. And just because I haven't done it already, I, I just do want to acknowledge um, David for his uh, yeoman's work in the last two weeks. I mean, he has really produced uh, some very clear uh, well laid out agreements and negotiated them with with multiple parties and I just uh, want to acknowledge that. Thank you, David. 
You're certainly welcome. Uh, noting the lateness of the hour, I will try and make this presentation even shorter than the last one. Um, the proposed joint co community facility agreements are a mechanism to move the funds collected through the CFD that were earmarked for habitat management at Fort Ord. Uh, back at the time of the conception of the 2018 transition plan, we were anticipating the possibility that a joint powers authority would be formed and that those funds would be moved in one single lump by a transfer to that JPA. Uh, that the prospect of a JPA no longer appears to be viable, at least in the short term. So this is a substitute mechanism that will allow funds allocated in the proportions that the board already decided upon and approved to be moved from FORA's accounts into accounts for habitat management that will be maintained by the recipient jurisdictions. Uh, what's in the uh, board packet is a template for that agreement. Uh, the intent would be that individual JCFA, Joint Community Facilities Agreements, would be entered into with each recipient. The authorizing resolution allows the executive officer the discretion to make minor changes where necessary to adapt to uh, specific needs or requests by the recipients. I would note that since the board packet was put together, I received communications from uh, County Council and the Seaside City Attorney making requests for some minor revisions. Uh, I've reviewed them. I think they're acceptable and they are, in my opinion, all within the scope of minor changes that the executive officer could approve without having to come back to the board to get specific approval to, to make these minor wording changes. So uh, the, the staff recommendation is that the template be approved. It can then be adapted for use by filling in the name of each particular recipient jurisdiction and sent over for execution by the, uh, the jurisdictions returned to, to FORA, at which point, if the board approves the template, the executive officer will have the authority to sign the final document. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Um, any board members with questions or comments on this item? I see uh, Director Morton has her hand up. Please go ahead. So Mr. Willoughby, thank you for that. I didn't hear in there your presentation what the minor change were, but I wanted to confirm that the changes would include that the uh, You've gone on mute, Gail. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I only heard the first half of your question and, and yeah, I don't see an indication that your microphone's muted, but I couldn't hear your question. I think she has to dial in now. So just audio issues on her end, I think, so. Okay, well, perhaps we can move on to other board comments or questions and then come back to Director Morton when she's back online. That'd be great. Um, any other board members with questions or comments while we wait for, um, oh, I think Director Morton may be back. Do you want to unmute yourself, Gail, and, oh. Can we? Thank you for the indulgence. There we go. There you are. So I don't know, if, I'm sorry, I didn't know if it, in the changes that were put forward that Mr. Willoughby is talking about, did those include the termination of the CFD and the release of the liens against property that FORA would do that? No, those are not in the MOAs. However, I am putting together a document to accomplish that, which would be brought to you at a subsequent meeting, but that they are not discussed in the MOAs. So would it be appropriate to reference that that is going to be in the MOA, would it be appropriate to reference 
that the CFD is going to terminate and the liens will be removed. I get you're doing a different document because it needs to be recorded. What I'm more interested in is that it's memorialized as a term of our agreement with FORA. I do not recall right now the specific mechanism by which that is going to happen, whether it's a release of the liens or a, a change to a zero tax rate, or a, I do not believe it's an actual termination of the CFD, but I just don't have a fresh enough recollection of what the document will provide. But it, it will effectively remove the CFD as a cloud on title to any of the property that, uh, that the jurisdictions may hold. Great, so at least in the MOA, that change in that memorialization of what you just indicated would be added to this proposed draft agreement? We could. Okay, uh, the city of Marina has requested that. I'm assuming you got a letter from council. I did not, but uh, they- I will they chase that down. And, and we can accommodate that request. Thank you very much. Thank you. Or, or perhaps if the letter was sent today, I haven't had time to read it. But uh, as of yesterday, I have not received any. Thank you, and I, I know you're pressured. Thank you for your attention. You're welcome. Director Adams. Thank you. I see that Ms. Stremling is on the line, and I just wanted to know whether or not the um, changes that you had been looking for were included in the, in the document. Yes. Uh, thank you, um, do, yes. Madam Chair. Want me to ahead. wait for public comment or uh, or speak now. Uh, go ahead and speak now. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I, I believe that as Mr. Willoughby has indicated, the changes that County Council has requested, he has indicated, are acceptable, and they have they're more form. In other words, uh, making clear what the definition is of habitat management services, um, making clear that the expenditure of the funds. Um, the description is consistent, actually uses the exact wording that comes out of the notice of special tax lien. So it's clear that it can include, you know, administrative expenses if necessary or various activities that might be involved in habitat management. So it's those, those kinds of changes. And I think Seaside had requested that it also be clear that the agreement doesn't cover um, doesn't cover what jurisdictions must do once the funds run out, then it's in the discretion of the jurisdiction about what they're going to do about their habitat obligations. That's really just a statement of fact. Um, th those are really the nature of the changes. So I think they were all what was intended to begin with. Um, I'm very pleased that um, we were able to have a good conversation with City Attorney of Seaside and that Forrest's attorney agreed to these changes, so thank you. Um, in regard to um, Ms. Morton's suggestion, my only concern is sort of a practical one, that the more things get added, then we have to review it again. We can't bring it to our board until then the, the agreement settles down, if you will, and so it sort of complicates things. Um, my understanding of this agreement is this is the transfer of the funds, um, which is very important. Um, and it you know, be great to get that one nailed down and approved. Um, I do, I agree that the other issue needs to be, you know, taken care of as a housekeeping matter, but I don't know, I don't know what the mechanism of that is. And, and part of me hates to combine everything because the more things you combine, the harder it is to then get to an approval. And, and we do have very few days left. Thank you for your comments um, and your clarification on uh, Director Adams's question. Um, any other board member with questions or comments on this, the item before us? I'm not seeing any hands in the Zoom, so I'll go uh, out to the public. Any, any um, other public comment on this item? I'm not seeing any blue hands in the Zoom room. Um, any other signs of interest that anyone sees? Okay, thank you. I'll bring it back to this board then. I would um, entertain a motion to uh, approve the, or to 
adopt the resolution. Move approval. Second. Second. Thank you. Motion by Hoffa, second by Gagliotti. Um, any further discussion by board members? All right, Mr. Tregenza, another roll call vote, please. Uh, Monica, I got a problem. Mayor Ian Oglesby. I mute your um, I'm all right, I think. Director Phillips, we can hear you and we're, we're trying to do a roll call vote. If you could mute yourself. Uh, Mayor Ian Oglesby. Aye. Supervisor Jane Parker. Aye. Supervisor Mary Adams. Aye. Supervisor John Phillips. Aye. Council Member Frank O'Connell. Yes. Council Member Alan Hoffa. Yes. Council Member Steve McShane. Yes. Council Member Janet Reimers. Yes. Council Member John Gagliotti. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Gail Morton. Yes. Mayor Marianne Carbone. Yes. Council Member Cynthia Garfield. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, we are past the hour of five o'clock. So to move to our last agenda item, which is pu general public comment, I would need a motion to continue just to complete that item. Is there anyone willing to I move we continue for public comment and then conclude. Oh, Thank you. Um, so a motion by Morton and um, Director Oglesby, did you second that? Yes. Terrific. Thank you very much. Um, roll call vote, please. Mayor Ian Oglesby. Aye. Supervisor Jane Parker. Aye. Supervisor Mary Adams. Aye. Supervisor John Phillips. Supervisor John Phillips. Aye. Council Member Frank O'Connell. Yes. Well, Council Member Alan Hoffa. Yes. Council Member Stephen Shane. Yes. Council Member Janet Reimers. Yes. Council Member John Gagliotti. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Gail Morton. Yes. Mayor Mary Ann Carbone. Yes. Council Member Cynthia Garfield. Yes. Oh, yes. Thanks, everyone. Um, we will move now to general public comment. Are there any members of the public who would like to make any comments on items not on today's agenda? This is your, this is your time. I'm not seeing any blue hands, any, any human hands waving in the screens. All right, I will close public comment. And with that, then we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. See you next Friday at 1. Stay Thank healthy. You. Thank you.